Hi. The last two videos, and coincidentally the only two videos on my channel, have low-key popped off. As much as my voice can't express it, I am very grateful for the support and the awesome comments. This time I'll actually get up to 10 minutes of useless facts. O okay, so I know they're not all useless, like some of them actually help, but like, you know, who's counting? If anyone noticed me mention on my community page that my next video wasn't going to be FNAF related, I just want you to know, I was lying. I'm still working on it, but I remembered the anniversary for FNAF was coming up, so I wanted to try to hit the date. We'll see how well that will get. That being said, this video obviously won't go over any of the new anniversary stuff, since I'm writing this before any of it actually happened. Here's a little prediction. The collab isn't actually Fortnite, and everyone's going to be very disappointed. If it is Fortnite, though, that means I'm going to have to buy all the skins, and that's going to be very expensive. Also, a little warning, um, there's going to be a lot of FNAF world in this. I'm the old norm. I want normal beer. When getting jump scared by Chica in FNAF 1, there's a weird stripe from the door behind her that stays still during her jump scare, cutting off part of her arm. I actually have no idea why that occurs. The door and light buttons also stay completely still during a jump scare while the camera is shaking, because it's just a PNG slapped on top of the office. Okay, I'm, I'm editing this video and I, I like, I just noticed that there's a second line here on the left side. There's like a little corner that cuts off her like feathers or whatever on the top of her head. I did not notice that at the beginning. Phantom Mangle actually has two different loading screens in FNAF World, one referring to them by he, and the other referring to them by her. In fact, gender confusion seems to be a common trend with the Mangle line of animatronics. Mangle is famously referred to by both he and she in the games, usually right next to each other. For example, UCN's description of Mangle says, Once Mangle reaches the vent opening, he will never leave. Use the vent snare to prevent her from making it that far. There's also the Steam post of Scott referring to her gender as yes, while well, Mangle is referred to as he and she in UCN, the other forms of Mangle, Phantom Mangle, Nightmare Mangle, and Funtime Foxy are all referred to as he. Funtime Foxy is special though, as even though he's usually referred to as he, the dialogue from hand unit and sister location says both. Let's check on Funtime Foxy. Make sure he's ready for showtime tomorrow. Let's check on Funtime Foxy. It's important to make sure she's on her stage before entering. Even though it's free now, you can still download the FNAF World demo off of GameJolt. It never got updated to version 2, so you get to experience all the cool features like an Atari graphics styled map, half of your screen being pitch black, and not being able to move in two directions at once. All of the Click Team FNAF games have a couple keybinds like Control S that will toggle all the sounds that are playing off. Bunga, I miss you. That one isn't as useful in my opinion as hitting F2, which will instantly restart the game back to the main menu. I get a lot of use out of this one while playing FNAF World, cause like, every ending forces you to close up the game, so it saves me a precious 5 seconds that it would take to open up the game again. If you're lucky, Yeno can appear in the Fundam Auditorium during Night 3 as sister location. You couldn't torture me into trying to get footage for this, so here's an artist's interpretation of what it would look like. Olba hasn't been in too many games, mainline ones that is. That includes FNAF World. But even then, their design is pretty interesting to look at over all of them. Starting in FNAF World when they were first introduced, they were pretty much just a full recolor of Funtime Foxy, orange and purple instead of pink and red, and black eyes with white pupils. Other than that, they're basically identical. They returned in Sister Location as an easter egg in the Control Module, and as an enemy in the Custom Night update. Lulbit again is a recolor of Sister Location's Funtime Foxy, but isn't one-to-one -one like FNAF World. There isn't much to go off with their Sister Location design as they have no body and are only a head, but even then you can see that they're missing the eyebrows that Funtime Foxy has. They also seem to be missing parts of their endoskeleton, missing their endo jaw and eyelids. While there isn't a full body render of Lulbit's design in Sister Location, there actually is a Funko figurine of them. They have the same thing going on like in FNAF World, where everything pink and red on Funtime Foxy is orange and purple on Lulbit, including eyebrows which Lulbit hasn't had up to this point. There's also the obvious thing to point out which is that Lulbit kept their hook from FNAF World. The next game that Lulbit shows up in, not including UCN, is Help Wanted 1, where Lulbit has a full model for the first time. First thing to say is that, while they do have eyebrows, they're painted the same color as the rest of their head, and it makes me wonder why they didn't either paint them orange or delete them entirely. Lulbit's fingernails and hands are also white instead of orange to mirror how Foxy's hands look. This kind of makes Lulbit's model in this feel a little unfinished in my opinion. Toy Bonnie's textures are very subtly broken in Help Wanted 1. From the outside he looks fine, but in certain lights you can see these small little lines across his body. What's happening is, while his base color textures are fine, his ORM map, some nerd shit don't worry about that, doesn't fully match up with his base colors as it's supposed to. More specifically, it's the roughness map that's the problem. You can see Bonnie's face is still there, just overlaid with all these lines. Now, you might be thinking, hey, those lines right there look familiar, is this just a different texture overlapping Bonnie's? And you would be correct. The texture overlapping Bonnie's roughness map is actually Mangle's. Here you can most prominently see their ear shape and what I think is Mangle's foot, I'm not totally sure. Lefty is more than just a color-swapped mirrored version of Rockstar Freddy. 
Obviously, he's black instead of brown, has red accessories, has a weird small eye, and is left-handed. However, some less obvious differences are that his nose is bigger than Rockstar Freddy's, the star in his chest is smaller, and the texture for his eye is very slightly bigger and flipped upside down. Glamrock Bonnie's eyelids are different colors for each eye. His left eye has a black upper and lower eyelid, and his right eye has a blue upper and lower eyelid. You know, sometimes when you write these down you expect to say a little more about them, but in the FNAF 3 post night minigames, you can juke out Purple Guy by walking up to the safe room so the air shows up on the top right. <clears throat> that is most definitely not the top right. Then quickly walk out of the room to the left and you'll see Purple Guy clip through the wall to dismantle you. Also just a little side note, in the Happiest Day minigames, you can clip through the bottom of the balloons you platform on as some epic sauce speedrun tech. To be honest, I'm not sure if this is just a bug for me, but turning on the flashlight at the closet doesn't make a noise. It only makes a noise when you turn it off. Sister Location's Extras menu shows off what a few characters looked like before their designs were finalized. Funtime Freddy was originally white and pink, colors that you'd find on Funtime Foxy's final design. Bon Bon was nowhere to be seen, and he had four buttons instead of two buttons and a large speaker. His eyes were also this weird realistic texture before it was changed to a slightly more cartoony one. Foxy wasn't changed much. He was originally white and purple, colors that you'd find on Funtime Freddy's final design. Outside of that, the only thing added was his bow tie and the more cartoony eyes like Funtime Freddy, although they did start it as green before being changed to yellow. The only noticeable thing about Baby's work in progress pictures is that her hair started as brown before it was changed to being half orange, half red, then to fully red as it is today. Also, one more thing about the extras menu. Hovering your mouse over the bottom left will let you play the Baby minigame whenever you want. I'm pretty sure it only shows up if you've played it already, but I'm not totally certain on that. If Golden Freddy spawns in your office in FNAF 2, he can't attack you if you aren't moving or flashing your light. Bonnie and Chica aren't the only animatronics that can attack on Night 1 of FNAF 1. As the night goes on, Foxy's AI level will increase very slowly, to the point where if you're playing normally you wouldn't even know he's active that night. However, if you decide not to check the cameras at all, Foxy will progress enough to attack at around 4am. Game over. Nightmare Balloon Boy has two jaws, which is famously one of Balloon Boy's core design features. What's special about his second jaw, or rather what's not special about it, is that it's just his main jaw but scaled down to fit inside his mouth. The texture on the outside was also made the same as the inside of his mouth, so it doesn't look weird. Other animatronics have separately modeled inner mouths, like Mangle or Chica, but Nightmare Balloon Boy got the old copy-paste treatment. It stays the same in his FNAF World model, because it's essentially just a reused version of his FNAF 4 model. The differences between them being a different texture on his eyes that are bulging out now, and some leg shortening surgery. It's interesting to note that basically every other FNAF World character has their own unique model, except for, say, Coffee or Chipper. He did get a new model in Help Wanted, but you might notice that his inner jaw this time is just his outer jaw made smaller. The textures weren't even changed to mask it a bit. I do question how these design changes happen, like was it intentional or an accident that was missed somehow? Uh, but then I remember it's a video game and who cares. If you decided not to touch anything during the first night in FNAF 1, the power will hit 87% basically right when Phone Guy brings up the bite of 87. Uh, they used to be allowed to walk around during the day too, but then there was the bite of 87. Yeah. Along the same lines, FNAF 2 has it set so that the puppet's music box won't start winding down until Phone Guy mentions it for the first time. Wind it up for a few seconds. It doesn't seem to affect all of the animatronics, but it does affect one of them. Uh, and as for the rest of them, we have an even easier solution. You see, there may be a minor glitch in the system. In the trailer for FNAF 3, as the Springtrap jump scare plays, you can notice in the background that the fan is behind the glass instead of being on the table. Also in FNAF 3 itself, Phantom Angle is the only animatronic not to show up in the extras menu. When getting jump scared in FNAF 2, animatronics will cover the UI elements to give off that in-your-face feeling. However, there's one thing that they don't cover up when jump scaring, and that's the flashlight text on the top left. The first few games in the series had some weird aspect ratios. The first game was in 16x9, which is fine, but because the game is so low res and forces full screen, it absolutely destroys my other monitor when I open the game and I have no way of showing this and I'm praying for it to get fixed someday, please! FNAF 2, 3, and 4 are all actually in 4x3, which you may not have noticed if you've played it because they're all stretched to 16x9 on Steam. FNAF 2 is probably the most obvious of the three, as a lot of the textures look really stretched. FNAF 3 and 4 don't really have that stretched look to them. When Sister Location came out, it was made specifically for 16x9, and so were the rest of the games going forward. Pretty much every minigame in the series has these lines over the screen to mimic playing on old hardware. You might think it's some cool epic effect that he put over everything, but it's actually just more or less a PNG of striped lines overlaying everything. That's why it's not always pixel perfect. 
On that note, one of the images shown during the ending cutscene of FNAF 6 is the Take Cake to the Children minigame without the arcade filter over it. Now that the filter is gone, you can see this tiny gap in the top corner that's invisible with the arcade filter over it. I hope you enjoyed these useless facts. This will probably be the last useless facts video for a while, mostly because I've nearly run out of stuff I know. The next videos I'm working on are the Every Bonnie and FNAF video and a video about Ultra Kill. Not sure which one will end up coming out first, so you'll just have to wait and see. I don't have a funny bit to put in the outro for this one, so... Bye!